Hey Hi Carver Squad, Foxy here with the new video. In today's video, I just want to talk about the patch update, the shift update, artifacts, the new B12, B10 dungeons, and just some, some of the feedback and posts I've read within the community. And I'll give my own personal thoughts about it if you're interested. So if you're not, hey, thanks for checking out the video and clicking on it. If not, uh, if you are, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Foxy's TED Talk where it's not scripted and I'm just talking on my bum hole. So, my first thing from my bum hole I want to talk about is how I really, really think artifact implementation was really hot garbage. First of all, don't get me started on that interface. That interface is a mick duty. That, that, that interface burns my eyes, okay? So that number one needs to be fixed. Number two, artifacts in general is, I think, puts the game too much of a grind. There are too many combinations and possibilities for artifacts and some of it doesn't even make sense. And when I say it doesn't even make sense, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Skill 4 crit damage on a support rune. How many support monsters got a skill 4 crit damage? I think that one was for like Samurais and someone told me Christina. Anyways, as you guys know on slot 1 runes, slot 1 runes cannot have defense Flat defense or defense percentage. Slot 3 is a defense main, therefore you cannot have attack percentage or flat attack. So there should be like a, some form of limitation to these artifacts because these artifacts will have virtually every stat in the game and some of it makes no, no sense. And speaking of no sense, that's how I often feel about reading these essays that I'm farming. First, my first point here is why as why does the community have to figure out what everything means and how each concept and stat works exactly why is that not in the patch notes or developers note of how every description interacts with the game why do everyone have to test it and find the most optimal build i don't understand why it's not transparent and why as a company you're making the players figure that out maybe that's the fun in farming well, I don't find that really fun when I don't know what the hell I'm farming for. It's therefore, I keep everything and then I have 300 artifacts sitting in my goddamn inventory. Like, dude, you see this, this is right here? Like this, yeah, pretty simple. But when you get those wall of texts, like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyways, my next thing here is, what, what is my next thing here? Some, some of the artifacts. Um, I forget what the next thing is. Okay, well, no, the TED Talk still continues. It's not just yet over. I may have forgotten one thing that was on the tip of my tongue. Maybe I'll come back because I'm stalling for time here. But no, it's not coming back. Anyways, I think a big problem that some people oh, I've read about is the patch is too hard. And I'm not going to criticize you for saying it's too hard because I've been there, done that. I've, I've been playing this game when GB10 was super duper hard, three minute runs with Veramos. That was the life. Veramos, Shannon, Bella, Bernard, and something else, forget. Maybe Sigmars, three minutes. And it was definitely very hard, very similar to what you feel now in GB12, except the drops are significantly better. And there has some discussion where people are saying the gap is not closing, free to play players, are gonna fall behind even more now. And the, and the idea probably comes because as a free-to-play player, you gotta farm three minutes for GB12 to get some good runes where people like me, late game players, farm a few seconds and get those six star runes on a higher rate. But you have to understand, everyone's gotta walk before they can run. It's, it's baby steps, right? You can't just expect to reach a late game. So I understand that sentiment and I'm not gonna say they need to nerf it or or um, leave it how it is. I think as Comptos as a company, they need to decide based off the feedback, not just from the global community because they're a Korean company and they're probably gonna take the Korean community feedback more um, seriously, <laughs> auto farm. Anyways, they're probably gonna take your feedback and then decide, you see that, you see that artifact? I didn't even bother reading that shit. I just, I just took it because I can't bother reading it. Anyways, so as a company, Comptos should decide based off community feedback, where they want to take the game. In the past, they have nerfed a lot of PvE content to make it easier for newer players. Will they do the same after this GV12 or the shift patch has been up for a while? I don't know. 
It's a question of how hard do they want to make the grind? Is the grind too hard? Therefore, it makes players not want to play ever again and drop the game because it's not fun anymore. And there's no fun in farming. Pfft, fun in farming, oh my god. Or is this good and they keep it as a way because they want some late game content for you to reach and they just want you to plow 30 seconds GB12 at all, right? So that's something they want to discuss. I'm not going to criticize you if you think it's too hard because I do see that argument. It definitely is too hard because well, first of all, I don't think, well, personally, I don't think it's too hard. For me, as a late game player, I had a lot of fun in crafting teams, testing teams, and even failing. Like, having that feeling of failing that GB12 run trying to find a speed team, it was enjoyable, right? And it only gets so enjoyable for so long because that feeling becomes frustration after you fail every freaking run. And you everything you theory craft doesn't work because, like, this dungeon, this dungeon relies on good AI. There's no freaking good AI. A bad freaking uh, dark pot, I mean, dark vampire doo doo. Um, wind pioneer doo doo. But I mean, everything's doo doo. Like, why, why is the mechanic? relying on RNG even a thing, right? And so you can be said with Predator. A lot of people in Predator are struggling because they just need that one bomb proc RNG to get them past that whole hump. Maybe that bomb proc RNG to heal. And I remember I read this somewhere. Calm to us is not a gaming company, it's a gambling company. And I, and I laugh because <laughs> there's a lot of RNG in this game, whether it be bomb procs, whether it be on terrorists, whether it be bomb procs to do PvE or PvP, like that was a pretty funny statement. Anyways, moving on to my TED talk here. Another thing we need to talk about is a mana. You probably see all my hot mana here, 285 mil. Foxy, why are you complaining about mana? I'm not, I'm not complaining about mana, but I am for the people who are early mid game. I, this is my voice for you guys, okay? Why is Artifact Re Rune not part of FRR? Why are they pay? 25k for a plus 12 and a 50k for a plus 15 artifact to be removed. Also, why is the management, this is for me more personally, because I, because I, I happened to me. Why is the rune man, artifact management not like um, the, the rune management where you go to the manager and you replace the rune. I accidentally replaced an artifact and over engraved it, thinking the manager was the same. I was like so used to the rune manager and I just, engraved it i lost it but anyways let's talk about mana okay like mana from just mana in general so b2 everyone should be farming b12 if you can't you're farming b10 to get to b12 so assuming you're farming b12 you're probably doing it two minutes three minutes a minute 30. the overall mana that you'll you will be getting i think over time will definitely be less because you're no longer doing 30 second runs so mana is going to be a resource that's going to be super huge for early game and mid game players to progress because plus 15 artifacts plus 15 two four sixes and then one three five runes is going to be really huge and not having artifacts to be removed part of FR is a big deal and in fact for me personally, I found a lot of fun in the four or three days of free removal because I can test teams as much as I want. I don't have to worry about mana. If I, if I destroy my whole account in one day, I don't have to stress about fixing it the next day. I'm not stressed about fixing my account within 24 hours. I had the liberty of doing FR across multiple days and enjoying it. I think that's a big thing. And I come, I've come to realize that I've, I'm coming kind of to the point of the game where I have things to do in life. I'm no longer in school and staring at my screen five hours a day. I'm doing this stuff in life. And that's a lot of people playing this game. They're older players who play mobile games because they're AFK doing something else while playing this game. And when you have one day to do FRR, it's kind of like, I don't even do it. Like, I'm gonna be quite frank, for the last year, I, I did what, like two, two, two monsters per day, or per, per month, and that was it. Except for RTA. Like, for my Siege, that's why I don't do Siege. Like, my Siege monsters are the same from last year. Like, even though I'm Siege farming, they, they, they haven't changed because I don't bother, I don't bother. So my next point in my TED talk is again about the artifact system. And if you guys didn't know about the roles, you can find it on Reddit, but why is it a possibility that you can roll 1% crit damage? Let's just say I have a legend rune and this legend rune rolls four times 1% crit damage. That rune or artifact, sorry, is as good as a magic one that can roll five 
in one roll if you get lucky. So farming for artifacts is going to be infinitely longer and I think the focus on artifacts right now for linking players is super huge because they already have a good pool of regular runes that, that don't need upgrading or need upgrading obviously because it's a grind game but it will have very minimal returns therefore artifacts is better but how about mid game and early game players i've been telling people that yes you should still farm artifacts regardless of where you are in the game because the extra stats they give you is worth it it doesn't need to be a good artifact it can be like a blue artifact main status attack for your illusion plus 12 it, 50, 50 additional attack, fantastic. Or for your builder team, help you achieve it, right? It's like a progressional step, but it's not a focus yet. But there will come a time where you have to balance your crystals. Am I farming for artifacts with all of these all these possibilities of having force? <laughs> oh my God, this enrages me. All the possibilities of skill for crit damage why does it why does that even exist okay anyways moving on uh, moving on that is my ted talk here i hope you guys um well i don't know if you guys enjoyed it but let me know in the comments below what is your feedback about the shift patch do you like it you don't like it is it hard is it good enough should they nerf it because comp to us does have a have a history of nerfing things and speaking of of nerfing things um that just brings me a random unscripted topic here auto farming we talked about feedback and how comp to us is either very slow to implement co uh, community feedback or they don't do it at all <sighs> auto farming is being considered I remember watching the Twitch stream of when they put on the screen auto farming consecutively and everyone in the chat was like poggers, pog champ, auto farm and then they end the stream with it is being considered. So if you leave some comments in below, I'm gonna tell you it's being considered.